so I don't think I've ever been here when you haven't heard or seen something. I I've seen full apparitions walk down the hallway, disembodied voices, you name it. I want you to make yourself known. racing. Whatever the f*** that thing was, that was terrifying. Nestled inside the farmlands of Illinois sits the infamous Ashmore Estates. Dating back nearly 150 years, this building, formerly known as the Coles County Poor Farm, held what were deemed to be the outcasts of society. Everyone from orphan children and single mothers to alcoholics and pedophiles were placed on these grounds. With such a mix of energies and reported deaths, it's no wonder that Ashmore Estates has gained a reputation as one of the most haunted locations in all of the Midwest. We traveled eight and a half hours to North Ashmore, Illinois, where we will be confined to this property for two nights to investigate the numerous paranormal claims associated with the estates. They say Mary and Margaret was maybe like what we call, well, they were mentally handicapped, so they don't know if they put them in here to keep them safe because being a poor farm, you're in here with men, women, murderers, crazy people, perverts, the whole gamut. So, and I'm sure they weren't the only ones here. Maybe they kind of tried to keep single kids with no parents. Right. Yeah, that's true. Just keep an eye on that's it. Places we've been, that's been yeah. mixed And it was. The poor farm from uh, 1916 to 1954, and then it turned into an asylum, which they helped people. After closing its doors in 1985, the property changed hands several times, including being used as a Halloween haunted house attraction. I do think they treated them nice, because, you know, we've asked them and got EVPs, hey, look, was it fun living here? Did you do okay? And, you know, it's a, I've never heard anything negative. And so I was like, yeah, we love it here. As Terry is talking about the treatment of patients, this strange light anomaly swirls down and falls in front of me. We don't believe this is dust or a bug because of the way it's shaped and the way it moves. And if you get Robin to talk about it, when Robin come up and bought the place, or looked at it before he bought it, he said he walked this floor, and you gotta know Robin, he's like this big 350 pound guy that's just like Santa. <laughs> He said he walked down this floor and he said it wasn't so much he felt to save the building, he said he felt people going, please save our building. And he'll get you crying sometimes. I mean, he gets emotional over it. So, and he's had it since 2014. Of the several tragedies that are ingrained in the Ashmore history, one that stands out the most is Alva Skinner, who was a young girl that burned to death inside the building in 1914. There are some stories, there's a farmhouse just right down the road here, and there was, um, there was four children down there, and they came up here several times when Robin first bought the building, and one of the stories that I remember that Robin told me was the wife and the little girl, which I can't remember her name, they sit out in the car because the husband came up here to help Robin do some work. And so they're sitting out there for quite a while. And finally the little girl asked her mom if she can go in the building there. And mom's telling her that it's not safe. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And she said, well, that little girl up there in the window's in there. So this child could actually see the little girl. And she even named her as Alva, which is one of the small children that died in a fire here. She went to school and Alva actually followed her to school. So she's sitting in the classroom you know, doing her homework or whatever they were doing, 
and she starts screaming no I told you not to follow me here I'm gonna get in trouble and so you know the teacher calls her out and is looking at her kind of funny and so you know the counselor gets involved and the principal and they don't of course don't believe that Alva followed her to school so the family actually did move away from this area and probably one of the reasons was she was older you know getting older and Alva was actually following her to places that she probably you know she shouldn't have followed her to school another notorious spirit that's said to roam the hallways of the estates is Joe Bloxham a former resident and maintenance man of the poor farm who was killed by a train in 1921 and this is the boiler room. Oh, I've heard a lot about this room. There's a story that Joe, and you'll see him painted on our t-shirts and stuff. Joe was um, an inmate here, and I think he was maybe mentally handicapped, and, but I, I think it was his job to take care of this because they say he pretty well stays down here in this area. So. Is this where people get scratched? And they, they, and they don't like women. Whoever's down there does not like, I have never had a personal experience, but we've had girls run out here. So. And what happens specifically? Well, I th they say they reach and grab them, but I don't think Joe's the Sue that used to take care of you who said that there's somebody else. Because Joe seemed to be like a really nice guy, so we think there's somebody else down there. How many patients could this house at one time? I think there was 80 in here at one time. After, but back in the poor farm days, they didn't keep the record. True, yeah. I mean, it was just like whatever they could take. This room here will stop in. This room, Robin just kind of wanted to fix up and make it look like a real room. There's no reason. That goes out to the other porch, too, but we just keep it locked. So he's just brought in some old furniture. Kind of set it up. This room's usually active. There's a little bit of a different energy in here. I can feel that. I've seen crazy stuff in here. Like what? I've seen like, we were sitting here one night, have you ever heard of the crawler that's in, down at Waverly? Mm -hmm. I've been to Waverly years ago. But I was sitting here one night and we watched something come in off of that ceiling and it dropped straight to the floor and it stopped right there. It wasn't a ghost. I mean, it was either an elemental or an animal is like the size of a small dog and it just sit right there and four people saw it but it was like a black shadow like you can see fur or face right. or it was crazy and then one night i was sitting in this chair so i could look straight out that door and i saw the light outside it was coming through there because i saw a seven foot figure that looked like the snow channel on your tv and i'm sitting here i got my hand i'm sitting in this chair my buddy's right here, and Jolene's over there, and I'm like, got my hands full of equipment, and I'm shuffling it to get in the chair, and I look up, and I'm like, yeah, you know how your brain's going, 100 mile an hour, and right. like, what the hell is that? Okay, it's the light from outside, and then I saw its eyes, and it had like, coal stone eyes, and I seen it move, and when it moved, it was almost to the door, and I thought, if that comes in, we can't get out. The investigation kicks off with Alex, Trent, and Brooke in the boiler room while Matt and myself explore the third floor. What was this room used for? Out the box. That's the answer, don't How many people are down here? You're slow. What? Did I say that? You're slow. What? Did I say that? Maybe. What brings you into this room?
suck. I think it just said you suck when he said I don't <laughs> suck. <laughs> Whoa. We're just listening to you. Yeah, that's what I thought it said. Something like listening. What are you listening? You just, you're just look, uh, scoping us out? You know, you know that we're going to be here for two nights, so you're just watching us, aren't you? We know what you're doing. We've been through this before. If you want us to go in there, just set that device off on the stairs. Joe? Joe? Go touch the green light. Can you see me? We can't see you. Let us see you. We believe that in just a few minutes, the spirit does in fact show itself to them on the stairwell of the boiler room. What do you think about me? I didn't say expect. Turn me. All right, we're gonna move out to the other room. Quit searching. Quit searching. Magnet. Magnet. All right, we're gonna go into this room. He will never count. He will, what the fuck? What did that say? He will never count or something? I don't know. That was a different new voice too. What the fuck? Those is a deadbeat? Is that right? Yeah. As they are about to walk out of the back room, three intelligent voices come from the Phasma box, including a hilarious roast of Alex calling him by his nickname. Alright, we're gonna move on to the other room. Quit searching. Magnet. Magnet. Alright, we're gonna go into this room. He will never count. He will, what the fuck? What he, will, he will never count or something. I don't know. That was a different new voice, too. What the fuck? Those is a deadbeat? Is that right? Yeah. What's my name? Weed boy. What? Weed boy? <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's what I heard. Or did it say Weez boy? Weez boy. Oh, no way! Did it say Weez boy? Did you say Weez boy? Oh my gosh, they are savages down here. While Alex originally hears the also accurate phrase, Weed Boy, after Trent asks for his name, the spirit actually says, Weez Boy. What's my name? Weed Boy. What? Weed Boy? This is hands down one of the funniest responses we have ever gotten, as just a few moments ago, this happened. Was that just you wheezing, Trent? Is that what that was? <laughs> Am I reason? Yeah, I think you're weird. Are you okay with me being down here right now? Sounds like something scurry. Right. Is Alva down here with us? What's your name? Alva. Alva. Whoa! What? Deputy's machine. Something machine? You're next to a machine. What? Some just, some sw I just tugged down my pants. No way. Yeah. I got nothing that would move in my pants. Is there anything around here? No. No. Greg, take some pictures. Take pictures of me. Keep the camera looking towards something else. Don't mind. I hate you. I hate you. Flash. 
The sequence of events that takes place right here is pretty mind-blowing. Right after a young girl's voice is captured, Trent feels his pants get tugged on. Right then, another voice is picked up saying machine, which we believe is referring to the boiler located next to Trent. What's your name? Alva. Alva. Whoa! Machine. Something machine. You're next to a machine. Anyway. Some just some sw just tugged on my pants. No way. Yeah. Brooke proceeds to take pictures around him. This is what she captured. In the first picture, this weird blue light is captured between Trent and the boiler. In the next picture, the same blue light is on the stairs. And in the third and final picture, it's completely gone. They would capture no more significant voices or activity after this in the boiler room. Good. Spirits of Ashmore, you have us here for two nights. We just want to communicate with you. We want to hear your stories. We want you to open up to us if you want to. We are not here with any disrespect. We're very thankful that uh, you're letting us in to your property here, and we just want to be guests and hear what you guys have to say. So feel free to make any noise to let us know you're here. It's so silent. Crazy silent. Is there anybody up here on the third floor? Right here, the camera captures these very strange light anomalies at the other end of the hallway. We don't believe these to be reflections of the window because they drop down below the windowsill. This is also the exact same spot where we caught that other light anomaly during our walkthrough. After experiencing relentless shit talking in the boiler room, Alex, Trent, and Brooke move to the hallway of the first floor where they hope it'll be a safer space. Why don't you show yourself? Show us that you're here, make a noise for us. Feels very quiet. People love this place because of how active you are. Can you show us show us what you do? No, it's not coming from your way, it's coming from behind us. Oh no, I hear it. No, it's on the stairs. Yeah. Oh, I hear it down here. I hear that? like a click. Yeah, it's those like cameras click. they I don't know if they turn their own off. Not see that's behind us. Yeah, it's no. coming from this what room. That? that wasn't. That's no. from this room right did here. Get, did you get that? I no. heard it through the wall on here. Bro. I swear to God, it Dude, sounded like a... something dropped. 
That yeah. was loud as fuck. A pebble went flying or something. So they'll turn on the drone and hear it click. Is Elba in here? What was that? That was from the other room. Oh my lord, what the fuck? Elva, can you come over here and play? What is that? Bro. What is that? Bro. Turn the flash on. No. No? Wait. Should we see what's in there for- <gasps> It's that carriage. There's a little carriage with dolls in it. Because the bicycle is over Bro. in this little hall. Stop. Keep that camera on and try. Are you pushing the carriage around? Go get the camera on right now. <laughs> dude, dude, get that fucking camera As several noises are heard in the back of the women's dining hall, Trent's camera picks up this quick ball of light moving right where the sounds came from. Ashmore Estates has provided us with one of the most active night ones we have ever had. We go to sleep and get ready for what is an intense night number two. We were in here one night, and there's a medicine cart on the second floor, and there's just five of us girls. We all stick together, so we knew where everybody was at, and we're working the floors one at a time, and on the second floor, we push that medicine cart, and we're like yelling, hey, come on, it's time for your meds. You better come out and get them, because then you have to go to bed. So we push the cart all the way down the hall, so we bring it back up to the nurse's station and park it up against that desk there, and we go up on the third floor. And we're sitting up there maybe 10, 15 minutes, and we hear that cart rolling downstairs on the second floor. Brooke and I are here on the second floor. We're gonna try to push this cart back and forth and ring the bell and uh, try to tell maybe some of the patients and people living here that it's time for their meds. Uh, we're gonna turn this phasma box on as we go and see if something wants to talk to us as well if they don't wanna interact any other way. Come get your meds. Stop by H room. Time for your medicine. Yeah, we're gonna just go back down and then go into the, one of the rooms. Help me. Help me. What can I help you with? Just moments after a voice comes through and says, the woman. The woman. A female voice comes through and clearly says, help me. Help me. Help me. What can I help you with? Does this show that spirits view the world as if it is still the era in which they lived? Is that why they view Brooke as a nurse there to help them during this session? Are you in the bathroom? Oh, You're in there? Can you tell me your name? Robin. Robin? Is anybody with you, Robin? Yo, the Robin's nest. 
you turn are you behind me these are absolutely class a responses a voice this time male says robin as they are right outside the room called robin's nest robin robin right after another voice says why don't you turn followed by a creepy voice saying back why don't you turn is the robin's nest the room that the spirit was referring to just a minute ago? Help me. What can I help you with? Do you know my name? Uh, two, your two mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> two mysteries. You want to come sit with us? You drew us into this room. What do you want us in here for? Just to talk? The details? What details do you want to give? Or get? Yet again, another top-notch intelligent voice says, I'm in a lot of pain. It's fucked up. Could this be Joe Bloxham, who died on the property after being hit by a train? The spirits seem to be getting a little more hostile as a stern male voice calls us out by our team name and demands, get them out. Because of the extremely high level of activity on the second floor, that is where Alex and myself will set up shop to do the Estes method, a dangerous form of communication that we have done just once before. I don't, I'm gonna start gagging. Go, alright, stop. When Trent and Brooke were up here just a few moments ago, you said they're here. Who's they? Again, that could have been dust, but it looked like an orb went right to your head and then shifted and went right into the doorway across from you. Hmm. Who's up in this room with us? Why do you stay here?
His name is Alex. His name is Alex. What? Oh my god. Oh my god, that was freaky. That was freaky. In front of the bed. Oh, that was freaky, bro. Within a couple minutes, a voice comes through and calls Alex out by name, almost as if it's relaying information to another spirit. Alva, is that you? I feel like I'm surrounded by dark darkness. Crusty. I feel like I'm sinking into this chair. Are you affecting Alex right now? I feel heavy. I'm starting to spin. Yeah, I feel like I'm spinning in circles right now. This isn't... The feelings Alex is having right now are about to get much more intense. Who's around Alex right now? The fuck was that? Are you around Alex right now? This whole chair is spinning. Oh my gosh. What a fucking crazy feeling. That's right. So you are around Alex right now. Did I just hear you? Oh my gosh. Who's in the boiler room? Sounded like it just whispered, or not whispered, whistled. Did you just whistle? Sounded like it whistled. Was this once again Joe Bloxham? Keep this whistling response in mind for later. Why do you stay here at Ashmore? Why can't you move on from this place? There was a loud banging sound. Who did I just hear? Oh my gosh. Little girl voice came through, said like five words. I don't know if I want to. Alva? Yeah. Alva? Is that you? <sighs> oh my gosh, dude, the puts you in a whole other place. Alva, did you just yeah. Alva, did you just come through and say you're dead? Was that you? <sighs> if that was you, how did you die? Oh my goodness.
dead. Dead again. It was like a fucking robotic, scratchy sounding voice. Who's dead? They're out there. Who's out there? Who's out there? Tell me. Are they good or bad? We'll see. These responses seem to be getting more threatening. Right after I hear a bang in the hallway, Alex hears they're out there. The same response Brooke and Trent received in this very room. What is your name? They're out there. Nope, I'm fucking done, I'm fucking done, I'm fucking done, I'm fucking done. I'm what the fuck fucking just done. What happened? I'm fucking done, dude. What happened? Stop fucking talking to me. Dude. I'm fucking done. What happened? I'm fucking done. The fuck happened? I don't know. I'm fucking talking that's dark and scary. What some of you watching may not understand if you haven't done it yourself. The Estes method is basically a very intense meditation in the spirit world. All of your other senses are blocked. The only thing you can hear is what they want you to hear. This can have a profound emotional and psychological impact as Alex is experiencing in this moment. My heart is racing. Oh, whatever the fuck that thing was, that was terrifying. What did you hear? I don't know, it wasn't talking, it wasn't any words. It was just fucking... I don't know, I'm fucked up. <sighs> Look at me. That was fucked up. I'm shaking. Stand up. <sighs> Stand up, take fucking, a breath. I don't even know what that was. It was so, I heard it once and then it was just the only thing that kept coming through. What did you hear? fucking dark, like just deep, hollow voice. And I'm just so fucking not here. When you fucking cover your eyes up like that and fucking do that, you're not even here. It's like, dude. I... Oh. Oh my gosh, it felt like it was trying to get in my fucking head when it started talking to me like that. You, when you were sitting there, your head was literally like swirling around. I felt like I was fucking spinning, dude. I was watching your head just like spinning. I literally felt like I was forth. in a swirly chair. To add validation to what Alex just felt, two spirit voices can be heard at this moment through the Phasma headphones saying run and hurry up. I was watching your head just like spinning. I literally back felt like I was forth. in a swirly chair. This is something that would stay with Alex for several days after. Alex, mm. you good? I don't know. Look at me. Stand up. Come on. Come on. We left a static camera rolling on that floor all night. What we captured two hours after the building had completely emptied is mind blowing. Did you just whistle? Sounded like it whistled. Ashmore Estates. For 150 years, humans from all walks of life have left their impressions inside of these walls. 
and in some cases, they never left. They're out there. When you walk the halls, you quickly find out the echoes of the past can be heard loudly today. Ashmore Estates, a true haunting in the heartland.